Welcome to another Top 5 here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I am Brandy. And I'm Alan. Today we're we're doing something a little creative. I feel like I see, I see a lot of lists out there that are uh, movie cliches that need to go away. Mm-hmm. Top 5 terrible things about movies. Um, so we're doing this list of things that are cliche but awesome. But are awesome, I mean, yes. sometimes the cliche thing to do is also the most emotionally satisfying exactly. or just the most we've fun. Seen it, we've seen it before, but we love seeing it in these films. And when it's done well, there's a reason why it's a cliche, right? Exactly. Because it's great. Exactly. Okay. So, um, I'll start out. My number five, this movie cliche that is done here is the not quite dead villain (laughs) where you think he's dead and then he comes back for a little more and i the instance of this i picked that is awesome is gene hackman's character in unforgiven oh (laughs) after clint eastwood puts a couple bullets in him and then he turns to the bar and he's tossing back a whiskey and in the background (laughs) gene hackman's body (laughs) starts kind of moving around again and you're like oh shit oh my god but of course clint's clint and he's gonna figure it out before anything bad can happen right he's gonna turn around and in that shot back shotgun right back in little Mm -hmm. bill's face and it's all gonna be okay. Yes. But I, I loved the way it played with that. It was like it could have been cheesy so easily, but it just led to another standoff between two awesome characters. And you know, you want as many standoffs between the two of them right. as you can possibly fit into those two hours. Oh yeah, you gotta <laughs> love great. it. Like the the bad guy's dead. Everything's good. Let's just relax. Oh wait, he's oh, not shit, dead. Son, oh my yeah. god, what a lesker. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Good. You see that in horror movies all the time, and I liked the way this. Played with that a little bit we'll probably mm-hmm. be revisiting that cliche Ooh. again so <laughs> let's move on to All my right. number five cliche moment um my number five pick is was big in the 80s and i like <laughs> to call it the random musical or dance scene in a movie that wasn't a musical or a dance, scene, a dance movie <laughs> And my cliche moment is from 1986, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, good. I mean, you got to thank John Hughes for all those great 80s movies. And this moment was freaking awesome. You mean, I mean, you have, what's it called? <laughs> um, Sloan and Cameron, they're walking along, talking. They're having a nice There's a parade talk. going on. <laughs> all of a sudden, they hear <laughs> Ferris over the intercom. They look up, and he appears out of nowhere, <laughs> starts singing. How did he get on that float? Exactly. How did he get on that float? Why are those people letting him do that? And then all of a sudden, they break out and twist and shout that... classic movie musical montage song everyone just breaks out in a choreographed dance that they just surprisingly already knew Um, (laughs) everyone's having an awesome time it's just it's yeah. It's something you've seen so often. It, it's been played with many, many times. But in this movie, I it, wouldn't it take worked. it out of that movie at all. I wouldn't. Yeah, it's one of the key know? scenes in that care. movie. It's, it's awesome. That movie, <laughs> that scene in that movie is all about being a kid, not having to worry about your future, and just having a good time. And that's exactly what yes. it was. And then, I mean, that crowd scene is freaking amazing. I mean, I just watched <laughs> it before this. And I was like, wow, that's still impressive. So, Sweet. good on you, John Hughes. All right, good one. Okay. My number four cliche is the scene in um, a romantic comedy type film where one person thinks they're about to be proposed to or have a great anniversary dinner Mm. or some fun (laughs) thing, and really they're about to get dumped. Oh, no. (laughs) We've seen it many a time before, but I don't think we've ever seen it quite like we saw it in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. (laughs) Jason Segel greets Kristen Bell with no clothes on. Or Surprise, the most man. awkward breakup of all time, and then continues to go through the whole thing with no clothes on. It's so awkward. I but love so this funny. movie so much. Oh, forgetting Sarah Marshall, but I mean, so good. How many times have we seen that kind of a thing happen before? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and this particular one is just takes it to the next level. Just takes it to a toll. Oh, it's so so sad because he thinks he's like like surprising her, making it a good moment. All of a uh-huh. sudden, bam! In your face, it's like oh, just I his most vulnerable time, you. like. <laughs> Talk about major shrinkage, dude. It's just, oh, it's just, it's so bad. It's but it so said, bad. like, you need it. You need that low level of humiliation. Exactly. To set everything up for the rest of the film. Um, you need him at his lowest possible point. I know. Naked and crying. <laughs> so. I hate being there. Oh, wait. <laughs> All right. Anyway, moving on. Moving on to my number four cliched moment. 
I like to call my cliched moment the evil villain laugh. <laughs> Just about every movie, you have a bad guy who lays out his plan and thinks it's really humorous and just has this maniacal laugh. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> My scene is from a recent movie. It's from 2011, this year, and it's The Muppets. Chris Cooper <laughs> as the oil tycoon, nice. Tex Richmond. And what's so awesome about his maniacal laugh is that he doesn't laugh. He just goes, maniacal laugh, <laughs> maniacal laugh. Yeah. And he makes everyone around him laugh and do his bidding. It's just so, so funny, so clever on the, that twist, uh, to twist that cliche. Yeah. Um, and Chris Cooper, I mean, I I haven't seen him that freaking entertaining in a long time. I mean, <laughs> he was a delight. He in that was movie, so yeah. cool to watch. His random rap scene in it was really cool too. Um, and who would have thought to say such a thing? Random rap scene was really cool. <laughs> again, the cliche random musical scene. There you go. Uh huh. Are. Yeah, that that was a fun one. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, my number three. Three. Uh, this cliche is the scene. Where the young, unseasoned cop has to go in without backup. <laughs> and coming at the end of The Silence of the Lambs, when oh, yes. Clarice Starling yeah. has to go in and face Buffalo Bill, the SWAT team has been sent to the wrong location. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, that happens, and it's it can be so cheesy. It's mm -hmm. always just like, oh... The shaky gun has to go and oh face God. the situation alone. But could you imagine the end of that movie if it was just the SWAT team descending on the house? And oh then no, it's it would have been over, like such a down know? note, like no, it would, you need that intense moment where it's just like dark and she doesn't know what's going on and she's just doing it anyway mm -hmm. because something terrible might happen if she doesn't even though something is almost certainly terrible gonna happen if she does mm -hmm. luckily at the last minute and they they build um, the the entire movie builds up to that point i mean she's not even a real fbi agent she's just the yeah, trainee she's just you know trainee. she does it this is her first time experiencing it and she has fucking wild bill to contend with it's like holy crap sometimes you step back and you look at these like great movies like the sound slam is a great movie and mm -hmm. so many of the story beats are quote unquote cliche but mm -hmm. they're done so well that it's just well yeah that's the thing never, a cliche yeah. done well it's like I i'll go with that anytime so yep. all right so moving on to my number three uh cliche moment um would be a little more serious this time okay. uh my number three cliche is the army commander speech just about every war film mm. you have this Lone We're commander going in there, boys. who yeah gives a speech to thousands and thousands and true of troops. First off, I don't understand how like troops can even hear him from the back <laughs> when there's so many of them and it's just his voice. But the one that worked well for me is from 1970, and it is George C. Scott's massive oh, speech nice. in the beginning of Patton. Such. An iconic image. You have General Patton walking up those steps, that huge freaking flag right behind him. Uh -huh. I mean, they're not subtle with the imagery <laughs> no. there. And what's so cool about this speech is that, well, one, it's made up of different parts of real speeches that Patton gave. Mm -hmm. And two, it's it's not one of those speeches where it's like, go get them, you know, we're going to win the day, blah, 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 blah. It's not one of those rousing speeches. It's a quiet speech it's a realistic speech um it's one of those things where he's like you know what it's going to be tough but i'm going to be behind you if you're going to be behind me the th thing about winning a war is not to die for your country it's about making the other guy die for his country it just showed how much of a badass pen was and kind of almost like over the edge he he was to a dude probably didn't have all the lights on up there to be such mm -hmm. so gung-ho and courageous um just a really classic moment in a classic movie it's like the scary flip side to the inspirational teacher speech right? yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. inspirational <laughs> speech <laughs> like taken to the extreme yeah yeah okay my number two cliche related to your number four it is okay. um when the villain gives a speech to the hero about what his secret motivations <laughs> yeah. have been the whole yeah. time yeah and the most awesome instance of this i've ever seen fucking old boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i mean that's what it is like it's totally like at the end he's like listen otis <laughs> this is why you just had to go through all this yeah. this is my plan all along and it's that scene that like james bond strapped to a mm -hmm. thing scene taken 
beyond what you ever could have imagined it would be where the very speech itself mm -hmm. the very revelation itself is so horrifying that what comes next i mean if you if you haven't seen it i don't want to spoil it but it just gets so intense and gruesome just from the speech itself like right. you don't need the laser beam going to james bond's crotch or whatever <laughs> right like, yeah you it's... just need the revelation itself yeah the thing about those that cliche it's always like <clears throat> why are you explaining this just mm -hmm. kill the good guy and but get in this it one you know exactly but in this one, yeah, why you know exactly why yeah. and why it's this specific character mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. great pick uh, moving on to my number two cliche, uh, I like to call this the strange monster noise. <laughs> Where you know that something bad is lurking around the corner, but you don't know what it is. And then all of a sudden, bam, it comes out of nowhere and gets you. Yeah. Mine is from 1993, and it is the classic scene in Jurassic Park. Oh, nice. Now, put yourself in their position. <laughs> You're in the vans, right? It's raining. All of a sudden, you hear this noise out of nowhere. Boom, boom. You look at the cup. The water's shaking. Holy crap, it must be big. <laughs> <laughs> You look up, the the rearview mirror is shaking. It's oh my goodness, this thing must be really big. It's just a gentle T-Rex. And then you look up, <laughs> boom, it's the T-Rex. One of the greatest reveals of a monster I've probably ever seen in a movie. The I mean, the computer-generated imagery in that film has not dated at all. That T-Rex looks fucking real, man. <laughs> And the thing is, they built up through that entire movie. It's like, okay, we have to see the T-Rex. Where's the T-Rex? They don't show it. And even that part where they try to feed the T-Rex, it doesn't happen. But when that scene comes up, it's like, holy crap, what are they going to do? The power is out. They're in big, big trouble. And that scene is just absolutely stunning. I love them. Love that scene. Love That's that That's a movie. good one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My number one, a little less badass than that, <laughs> but um, the cliche is when the underdog proves themselves <laughs> to the doubting crowd. Yeah. And it is that scene in Babe at the Sheepdog Trial. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when yes. they're just made, like, they're, like, it's so over-exaggerated using that cliche the crowd is just making fun of him like you've got a pig what is that <laughs> blah, blah blah and then they start to do what they're supposed to do and silence falls <laughs> and everything happens perfectly and then there's that scene of just the creaking gate shutting very slowly and then yeah. cheers are up yeah, like, exactly. it just completely plays into the whole cliche that we've seen in every sports movie but it's a freaking pig who can yes. talk who's asking sheep to move into a pen it is delightful <sighs> Um, ba ram you, son. Ba ram, ram fucking you. you. And it's so cool, too, because it's not like one of those things where it's like the underdog, like, overcoming that major obstacle. It's like, oh, the pig is just leading like a line of sheep. Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah, let's go around here. Let's go around here. But the way the scene is in. played is, like, so dramatic. Yes, and the crowd so turns so quickly for Babe when exactly. they're against him. It's like, him. holy crap, we can't believe what we're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. That'll do. That'll, That'll do, do, pig. <laughs> All right, my number one cliche uh, is one you already mentioned. Um, I like to call it the bad guy comeback. Bad guy comeback. And mine. Not quite dead. You mentioned it. It's in horror films all the time, mm -hmm. and one of the best bad guy comebacks was in Halloween. Oh yeah. Michael Myers. Just sits straight up. Just sits right? straight up. Well, first <laughs> off, let's go back. You okay. have that scene where he's crashing through the closet, and Laurie's in there, all scared and everything. Even now, that scene is pretty terrifying. Oh, and yeah. then, you know, you have Laurie takes the wire from the hanger and pokes him in the eye and then takes the knife and stabs him. You think it's done. You think it's over. Laurie Strode gets out of the closet, Damn. sits down, takes a big sigh of relief, and then all of a sudden, boom! Yeah. Michael Myers sits Soundtrack straight up, in. looks right at Laurie Strode, and it's like, oh my god, Laurie, turn around, he's right there. And just classic, classic moment yep. in that movie, uh, followed by another, uh, <laughs> another cliche with the police authority coming in the very last second to, <laughs> to save the good guy. God, they're always um, late. But, you know, that movie, the cliches yeah. were well done and it, it's I mean, great. that that scene is one of the reasons why that cliche won't die in yeah. horror movies, right? Because yep. you're just hoping to recapture that kind of magic. Exactly. Right? All right. Well, that was fun. I mean, there are tons of ones, Oh, my goodness, I think. yeah. So um, share some pics with, with us at mcguffinpodcast.com. I had a lot of fun with this topic. I would love fun. to hear people's yeah. ideas. Um, and we will catch you next time.